Good morning and good morning. Welcome to our worship service today. Honoring our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Almighty Father. The John, the Apostle John, in Revelation chapter 4 verse 11, says, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of you, they existed and were created. And in response to God's goodness to us and His loving kindness, let us commit to follow Him with all our strength, strength that He provided for each one of us. And we will all be happy and will enjoy the presence of our Lord. Let us continue with our focus this morning on knowing the way to real happiness. And may I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16, and then Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, and a little bit, Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16, and I want to share with you something that I mentioned about last week. From Micah chapter 6, 6 verse 8. Do justly and love mercy. Actually, this is taken also from Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. That says, blessed are the merciful. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 to 16. Let's meditate upon the word of the Lord. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Matthew chapter 5 verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Luke chapter 6 verse 36, Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Let us come to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful time that you have given to us, allowing us, Lord, to worship you and honor your mighty name in our midst. Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit that as we meditate upon your word, may you guide us, help us to understand so that we can apply the message that you have for each one of us today. Help us to know your will, your perspective, and your plans in our lives so that we will be able to do justly and to love mercy as we wait upon the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. This has been like a few Sundays that I emphasize on these words that I said can be used interchangeably. These words are blessedness and happiness. But this morning, we, I want to add two more words, or make it three, that can be used again interchangeably. When you talk about mercy, compassion, or kindness, the Bible mentioned about things that actually are the same aspect. Last week, I partially mentioned about the words, do justly. Love mercy, and there's a slide in there that says, and walk humbly. I think we talk about humility a few weeks back. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, I want to let you know that in the Bible, the words mercy and compassion as virtues are mentioned in various forms, hundreds of times, especially when it describes the nature of God. Instead of giving us what we deserve, God in His own mercy 
God as loving, shown us compassion, shown us kindness and mercy again and again. Not to take away our responsibility, but to give us a chance to repent from our sins. Allow the Lord Jesus Christ to come into our hearts and, and, and be saved. We can ask ourselves, just like as many people ask themselves, what have we done with that opportunity when God showed us mercy? Because us undeserving recipients of God's mercy, nothing else would be fitting that we, than that we ourselves show undeserved mercy and compassion for other people. Indeed, we are commanded by God in Luke chapter 6 verse 36. Be merciful as our heavenly Father is merciful. The Bible even speaks about compassion and care to all that he created for all of us when he placed on our shoulders the responsibility to take care of the things that he created. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, to have mercy, compassion, or kindness is to share the pain and suffering of others and actively working to help them. Because living with mercy results in being treated with mercy. But on the other hand, living without mercy is the prelude of dying without mercy. As Jesus said in the Beatitude, Happy are those who are merciful, for there will be shown mercy. Now, this part of the Beatitude actually raises us three very important facts. Based on what the author of the book of Hebrews wanted us to do in order to have in our time of need. Verse 16. What is it? Why we need to love mercy? Each one of us, as Jesus emphasized in this important passage of the scripture. Yes, you may ask the question, how can I be merciful? What can I expect as a result? Brothers and sisters in the Lord, how can we do justly and love mercy as we continue to live our Christian lives honoring our Almighty God? Three important facts that we need to do in order for us to do justly and love mercy in the sight of God. Number one, point number one. In order for us to do justly and love mercy, just as Jesus did, we must hold firmly to our faith, to the faith that we profess. And this faith is very important because without this, we will not have any power at all to do just what God wants us to do. In verse 14, it says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. Because of our faith in God, we know that God expects us to be merciful since He showed us mercy. Same as with other commandments of God. To be merciful and to love mercy is the only way that we, as people of God, we're naturally to respond with grace and goodness. You know what, brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, God could demand mercy from each one of us. But forcing us to act merciful doesn't make us merciful at all. 
He wants us to love mercy because it's the only way that we become people who naturally respond with grace and goodness. Because to be merciful is more than just an emotional feeling. To be merciful is, that, is more than just showing tears or shed tears. Of course, those who are merciful sometimes weep. And the tears are the most important proof when persons are so merciful to others. A good example for this is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ did not restrain his tears as Martha and Mary graved over their brother Lazarus' death. Another time he looked at the city, looking to Jerusalem, and then he wept over it. There is something startling about this strong man's weeping. Jesus, as God himself, have felt compassion to the people who are actually with him. And this Jerusalem crying is actually not only for the people in Jerusalem, but for the people all over the world who until this time still refuse to believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every time Jesus sees your hearts, every time Jesus felt the pain, he wept over the soul that actually did not respond to what he did for them on the cross. This strong man, God himself, wept. Jesus wept. But he did far more than that. He gave himself for whom he wept. It is easy for some to shed tears and sometimes are meaningless and unproductive. Theirs is emotion without motion. Theirs is not mercy and faith that will help them to do the right thing. Because our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ helps us to do what God wants us to become merciful as he is himself. And brothers and sisters in the Lord, without faith, we can't do that for without faith in God. The idea of being merciful is like being forced to us. And when mercy is being pushed to us, that is not mercy at all. I read a story about Max Lucado. He tells his own experience about how he and his boat survive a hurricane. Max said, an old seafarer, give him the advice to take his boat to deep waters. Once you get into the deep waters, drop four anchors off each corner of the boat. And then he said, pray that the anchors hold. And that's what Max Lucado did. And... To make long story short, Max survived the storm. But he says he learned an important lesson for that. Both physically and spiritually. He said all of us need an anchor that will hold us during the storms of life. When we are tempted and tried, we need to have this strong anchor. And brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, this strong anchor is our faith connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the question is, is your anchor put in Christ? Have you put your faith in the mighty God? How important it is for you to have this anchor and this belief that God will continue to bless you, that God will uphold you, and you will not have even a problem when you experience storms in life. When we are tempted to just go with the flow, 
When the current of this life, this world, is so strong. And since we find people not showing mercy, we are tempted also not to show mercy. We are tempted to just do what others are doing in this world. If that happens, instead of you changing the pattern of this world, you change according to the pattern of this world. Because when there is no mercy, as Christians, as people of God, we should have that responsibility to share mercy, to share compassion, to share grace to people who have not even have a relationship with Christ. Mercy goes beyond doing things because our friends, our neighbors, people in the world are doing it. For them, for them, it's not normal. For us, it's just natural. When we do something great for God in showing mercy to anyone, by praying for a friend, by giving something to an elderly, it is possible to give our body to be burned and yet not have mercy and compassion. Acts of mercy that are void of an attitude of mercy are invalid. Just like saying faith without works is dead. The mercy of Christ or the mercy of which Christ speaks is far more than the mechanics of doing good to others. It goes beyond that. It is something that cannot be turned on and turned off when we don't want to do and show mercy to others. It is and it demonstrate, as demonstrated by the Lord Jesus Christ, it involves in every aspect of a, serp, of a person's life. 24-7. It is an underlying attitude to see others as Christ sees them and feel towards others as he feels towards them. Apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, or chapter 13, verse 3 says, If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Perhaps, there is no greater expression of love than forgiveness. There is no other expression of mercy than sacrifice. When you have every right to be resentful, but choose to humble, to be humble, and to be merciful, and to be loving, and to be forgiving... My friends, you experience happiness that only mercy can bring. You bring happiness into a person's life that only mercy can make it. Number two, point number two. In order for us to do justly and love mercy as Jesus did, we must accept that we have limitations. Apostle Paul accepts the fact in our Bible study on the foreword, it says that he already shown us the example. I so strongly believe that Apostle Paul is a great man, great church planter, great man of God, but it was he who said, I have not attained it. How humble Apostle Paul was. Now in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have the one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet. Just as we are yet was without sin. 
How can I be merciful? That is my weakness. That's related to my limitation. I have limited knowledge on that aspect in Christian life. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, we all come from the same background. Help is available. Jesus, as powerful as he is, he knows us even those things that we know it's hard to do. The Lord Jesus Christ knows how he can help us to understand how to be merciful. In his answer to the question, in Luke chapter 10, he used the parable of the Good Samaritan. When this man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, he was probably a Jew and hated by Samaritans. He fell among the robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise with a Levite. When he came to the place and saw him, pass by on the other side. And this is the mercy story. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. In verse 33 it says, But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had mercy upon him. He had compassion on him. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring an oil in wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. What a blessing. He had mercy on him, even though, even though he is a Samaritan. Even though in the eyes of the world, there is a great division in their lives. In their characters. In their community. In their background. This person does not deserve mercy as others, as the priest and as the Levites thought. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, that is mercy and grace in action. If you like me, I ask the question, how can I be merciful? The Lord Jesus Christ gave us a good answer. Which of the three do you think prove to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the lawyer said, the one who showed mercy on him. Jesus answered for you and for me is this. Go and do likewise. When Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, that is good. And if the question is, how can I become merciful? Jesus answers for you and for me, just like he answered that man, the young man. The same answer he gave to us, go and do likewise. I feel I am like the Levite, guilty as charged. I feel I am like the priest that instead of helping, it is so easy to criticize the Samaritan who out of his good heart, who out of his good intentions is being looked up as the one who is not like the other. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, in our world right now, it is hard to be the one. But be the one for the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We need to become better acquainted with others' background. The problems they face and the reason for the scars they bear. Allow Christ to show his mercy through you. Be an instrument of God's peace. Be an instrument of God's love. Be an instrument of God's goodness by showing peace, by showing love, by showing goodness to others. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is the affirmation of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. And Christ in you is your only hope of becoming a loving, merciful person. You cannot do it yourself. People will ridicule you. People will discourage you. But do it for the Lord instead. But because as you surrender your bitterness and resentment to Christ. And allow him to live and work freely through you. Mercy becomes a normal attitude of your life. It will just flow as fresh spring water in you. It will just go on and on until people will be blessed because of God's goodness to you. Third and last, brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, in order for us to do justly and love mercy, we must have confidence in the power of God. We cannot do it on our own. In verse 16, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We ought to be confident and have the blessed assurance of grace, mercy and peace that comes from God our Heavenly Father and from our Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. It is because God's grace is His favor. His love, His kindness, His mercy. For if it wasn't for His grace and His mercy, where would we be as human beings? We are nothing in the sight of God. But because of God's mercy, because of God's love, we become a very special person as God's crown of creation. When I think of the goodness of God and of Jesus Christ, and all that he has done for all of us. My soul cries out. Thank you Lord for saving me. That was many years back. How great is your name. How great is your name O Lord. I thank you. For the salvation to the Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul in writing the Christians in Ephesus. In chapter 3 verses 17 to 9. He said, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. To grasp how wide, how long, and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. His love is deeper than the oceans, higher than the skies. That he wanted us to understand with all the saints that are already with him right now and those who receive Christ in this world, the measure of his love and to know the love of Christ that surpasses understanding, surpasses knowledge. He is our peace. His peace becomes our peace. That peace that the world could not give. And the world cannot take it away. For it is guaranteed when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ. His joy is our joy. Joy unspeakable in our hearts. Have confidence. Same as the confidence the disciples had when they trust the Lord Jesus Christ's word. When he left them 
and accepted the promise of Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Heavenly Father, for He promised that He will always be with you. Trust that He knows the way through this valley and will see us through safely. Believe that He has good reasons for directing you through this route in your life. Whatever route is that, whatever situations you are in, believe that God is leading you and guiding you, even though it's hard and, fam and unfamiliar. Have faith in Him and have the confidence in the power of the Almighty Father, the Creator of the universe, and you will receive mercy and grace sufficient for your need at the moment. Hold on to the truth. There is something better waiting on the other side of this valley because God is already there. Let me close with this. By understanding God's mercy, it motivates us with gratitude to give ourselves fully to Him. Because again, we cannot do anything without God. This will give us confidence in our weakness, in our limitations, that our offering is pleasing to Him. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, in the midst of despair and a broken heart, you can be confident that as you come to God through Jesus Christ in prayer, He will pour His mercies and His grace out onto you. His mercies are new every morning, and His grace is sufficient to get you through anything that comes your way. You are a child of God and a joint ear with Jesus Christ. Hold on firmly to your faith, for Jesus is able, and God will see you through and through it all. His hands will be upon you. Just learn and lean upon Him and trust Him with everything. Brothers and sisters in the Lord and to my friends, it is hard to trust in someone whom you are not familiar. If you have not known Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of this world, it's hard for you to trust Him. Acknowledge that He came into this world because He loves and He cares for you. Accept Him. Accept the fact that He sacrificed His life so that you will be saved. Allow Him to come into your heart by praying, Lord Jesus, forgive me from my sins. I accept you as my personal Savior. Take control of my life. Simple prayer, but this prayer will not happen if you don't have faith in God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time that you have allowed us to honor you, to worship your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, help us to have faith so that we will be able to do justly and to love mercy according to your word and according to your example in life. Bless us now. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of God, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, guidance, presence, and directions for each of our lives be upon each one of us, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all.